good morning, everyone. Welcome to Vantage Point with Obiso. It's actually my first series of doing a live recording um, on a teaching that I'll be doing in a, a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes with you. How are you? I hope you're well wherever you are. Um, before we start, I'd like us to pray. Our Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We give you praise for this new thing that you have begun in my life, and not just myself, but in the life of those who will be listening to me whenever, wherever they are. I thank you for your grace and your mercy upon our lives. And I thank you for your word, which you have put in my spirit this morning. I trust, O oh God, that you would speak to me and bring uh, uh, courage and bring and bring upliftment in the hearts of the people that will hear your word today. For those who are trusting you for direction, let your word bring for direction. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, we prayed. Amen. I'd like to share the word quickly. Um, last week, I celebrated my birthday. This has actually been in my mind for a couple of years. I sense the Lord is saying to me that I need to be doing this. And I, after celebrating my birthday, I did count um, I did count uh, my blessings and I looked back, uh, look back at a couple of things that I have had strong convictions to, to start and I have delayed. So here am I. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we will be looking at the book of Numbers, not specifically a chapter, but the journey of the Israelites throughout the book of Numbers. The Israelites had left Egypt at the time and they were journeying into the promised land as God had promised their forefathers. On the way, they experienced a lot of challenges. One of the patterns that I noticed with the Israelites is that they encamped and then they moved. They encamped. And when the angel of the Lord that was leading them lifted, they moved when the Lord was moving. But during those times that they were encamping, something struck me that was happening. When people were in sitting position when they were encamping. That was the time that the Lord was speaking to Moses strongly about the social laws, about, about criminal laws, about uh, uh, laws of justice, about how they should be as a people. And when they moved, there was an understanding that through their walk in the wilderness, as they journeyed to the promised land, that they were supposed to put the things that God has said to them in action it was quite obvious that they failed. Now today I'd like us to look at what happened and what could be the possible reasons why they couldn't keep up with the things that God was saying. In this day and age, Paul admonishes us in the book of First Corinthians. He said the things that we read, we read for our own learning. When we look at the history of the Israelites, we don't talk down about, you know, on their journey. We pick up on the things that they didn't do right and we learn from them. Sometimes we show up in church. We show up in, our, in the presence of God, even in our personal closet, our prayer closets. And God is speaking to us expressly. We are downloading words, things that our pastors are saying, our church leaders are saying, or even things that you're saying to others. You feel it so strongly in your heart when you're speaking to it speaking to others, especially when the presence of God is there. For example, in worship, you could be in tears. You could be in tears and the Lord is saying lots of things to you about direction, about how he wants you to order your life in order to fulfill destiny. And we realize that when we stand up from there, it, it, it becomes difficult in the journey to implement some of the things that God is saying to us. It did happen to the Israelites. Today, we will be looking at some of the things that we can do to translate the word that God is speaking to us in our spirits into our soul. Because God is spirit, and they that will worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. When God speaks, our spirits pick it up because it's our spirits that God make connection with. The important thing is how we translate the word that God is speaking in our spirits to our soul, and then to our bodies. For example, you all know that the soul is the seat of your intellect, your will, and your emotions. Some people would say, if that person is a Christian, I don't want to be like them. Why? Because maybe the way they react, maybe the way that they, they have their outposts when things happen around them. 
It's not because that those people are not Christians. It's because they haven't been able to translate the word from their spirits to their soul. This morning, I'd like to share with you a few steps, things that you could do to ensure that God captures not only your spirit, but your soul. First, if we look at the life of Moses, we recognize that the man, Moses, was a man of the presence. He was a man who had intimacy with God. He was a man who had hunger and desire to follow hard after God. Now, if God instructs a man in the spirit and the man doesn't consciously follow after God, doesn't create time for intimacy, it would be difficult for that man to have his soul wielded, to have his soul surrendered to God. Number two, if we look at Moses again, Moses not only looked at his intimacy with God, he was a man who made conscious effort, conscious effort to live by the instructions of God. For example, Paul says to Timothy that if a man must strive for mastery, sorry, if a man must gain mastery, that man must strive lawfully. What does it mean to strive lawfully? When I look at the profession where I am, I realize that there are lots of religion who teaches people how to strive and master their body, how to strive and master their soul. Now, if God is speaking to you and you're not translating his word and using it as a tool to learn to strive for mastery for your soul, you will not be able to do the things that God is saying for you to do. Actually, you may not live in complete obedience to God because he takes your will to obey God. So it's important that when we read the word of God, we become people who practice the word of God on a daily basis. We become people who engage that word because the Bible says that the word he speaks to us as spirit and our life. Some people may not understand it in pure details. What does it mean to be spirit? But the word of God has transforming power only when you allow that word to transform you. We must come to a time in our lives where we look at the word after God has spoken to you in your private private time that you look at the word and begin to make conscious notes about how do I achieve these things that has been said. Action points are very important. Goal setting is actually important in your journey and in your work with God. If you follow on that way, you would notice that you would grow. There will be progress in your work with God. There will be progress in your relationship with others because you're not only approaching the word of God as a tool for your spirit, you're approaching the word of God for, as a tool for your own soul. I heard a quote recently and that quote has blessed me. The man of God says, the extent to which God captures your soul is proportionate to how much you will fulfill your destiny. The extent to which God captures your soul is proportionate to how much you would fulfill your destiny. Your soul determines how people relate to you. Remember, it's your, the, the place where your emotions are, your intellect, your will. That's the place where character is built. If you want to fulfill destiny, in terms of God-given destiny, you must be someone who takes time to sit with the word. You must be someone who takes time to action plan the word of God. You must be someone who takes time to reminisce. Sometimes activities are too much. We're constantly doing something in church for God, which is very good. But after church, when you leave that place, just like the Israelites, after camping and it's time to move, there's no action planning. If you're not careful, you will not be able to fulfill that which God has originally said to you. Today, put action plan to place. Sit down. Write down a few things. This is what God said. This is how I aim by his grace and by his spirit to achieve what he's saying to me. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We raise, oh God, today our struggles with your word. We raise, oh God, today our struggles with your assignment upon our lives the things that we think that is too big for us to accomplish or the things that we have put off, procrastinations that we have put and said that this is what is stopping us 
from taking that step, as I have taken the bold step of faith this day to do that which you have called me to do, I pray for my brothers and my sisters, my friends, my family who will be listening to this message. I ask, oh God, that you stir up our hearts, stir up our spirit, help us to make war with the word that we have. Help us to be people who look at your word in terms of how rather than why. How do I do this? By your spirit, help us. We thank you for your grace. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you've been blessed. I look forward to sharing with you again next week. Um, please share, like, comment. Actually, I'd like to hear your thoughts about action plan in the word, um, about hearing the word and being able to translate it um, into action. What are you doing where you are? What are you doing with the word of God? Have you mastered it? Have you, are you someone who Paul was saying has gained mastery? Good for you. Please leave me a comment on my YouTube page. I'd like to hear from you. Have a lovely week. Bye-bye.